part five, and I say part five, so I don't forget where I'm at. Yeah, I'm definitely getting more stoned um, than I was in the last video. Um, and I discovered in the last video just how um, stoned I was during the post of the video. Um, whew, it's getting pretty far now. Um, train of thought. I'm sure there's one. I'm trying to find it again. Okay. And okay, let's not just talk about getting stoned. Let's talk about some some big ideas. See, the problem is I'm too stoned. But uh, not because you can see, I love my National Geographic. I just organized my date finally after a long time, and they're all here. And that sort of little task made me happy because I like my date. I do like going back and rereading them. I, it's, it's a long story, but. I grew up with them around all the time, and um, they're just memorable stories that I, that I remember I read as a kid, and the fascination of seeing how the world's changed, because they're just sort of this little piece of the world from that moment, and yeah, it's just a very interesting thing, the National Geographic, and I bought some from before 1959, which I got my parents old collection and out of my own but the um and they started in 1959 but before 59 i have a few now and i'm i'll probably get some more over time but yeah i still like pulling out you know three or four or five and just sort of like in a period and just sort of seeing how that period was um and that's as far as i'm getting with big ideas because um even that one's getting lost on me so yes um <clears throat> well I've only used up two minutes in the first two videos, um, three, and like ten minutes long. And uh, yeah, this is getting it's getting short because I'm trying to keep track of anything. Um, politics, who cares? I don't, not anymore. It doesn't really matter. Like whatever, we can survive through anything. Um, mediocre. Um gutless government whatever we'll just go on and it's not like yes okay we could do better and not have as many people die but i don't know we have just resigned ourselves to vaguely shitty government and i know i work for that vaguely shitty government and the people in the government are trying their best but there's no leadership from above no leadership saying strive for for our best strive for something more it's all just vaguely eh. maybe we need a time again where where there's a a call to action but not 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 a negative one. Oh my god there's horrible immigrants no a call to a positive action from the right and the left we've had really strong visionaries that that just could speak to the great ideas that's what we're missing, and maybe we never had that. Maybe it's my just view that we had it. <sighs> but in this era of meltos politics, it's hard. And there's no way that I should have been able to. I should have been. The, I mean, if the NDP had any semblance of progressiveness about them. It would have been and and seriousness about actually trying to do things and not being beholden to stupid ideas in the past I would have been a Democrat all my life. I mean, okay, let's see, there was a party that had any interest in anybody raising an idea and actually challenging the status quo. Like the NDP is just like it's either you completely agree or you're, you know you can't be part of the club, and it's just like. It's such a mistake on their part. Um, Greens, for all the dysfunction, uh, were at least had a vision of somewhere something better to go. The BC Liberals, people listen to me. <laughs> like, shockingly, they actually chose to listen to me. I made a cogent argument, but they shouldn't. But yeah, access and the ability to actually speak to what I thought was the right answers to things, to the right. Um, way to go forward and actually have some of it ad adopted and used by government. That was wonderful. Um, 
want to convince me to do my surgery and into the um into the conservatives. No, 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 no. What that really comes from is is I thought it was absolutely stupid in our country to have two right wing parties next to a centre right government party which got to be government forever because there wasn't one group with a cogent argument to say that they should be the ones so yeah I joined the progressive conservatives and the Canadian Alliance primarily because it was yeah actually get to get your shit together and be one party because you aren't any different really you're fundamentally a group that agrees and we can't have this mediocre, crappy, center-right party in power anymore. You need somebody with at least some ideas if you're going to be from the right. Yeah, so, I mean, I wanted there to be some opposition in Ottawa, so yeah, I joined them and then got pulled in to hang out with the Conservatives. <laughs> it's fun, but um, I don't think I ever had nearly the influence. I know I didn't have the influence in the Federal Conservatives. Maybe that's a whole other universe. This is so much a bigger world, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I had some MPs listen to me about my arguments about various things, but the BC Liberals, I think really valued was that um, may not agree with you, may have issues with a lot of what you're doing, but I have arguments for things that matter to me, and my arguments and my commentary was made sense of people, yeah, okay, it's worth considering, and that, I welcome that what the NDP should have always had, but has never had. Anyway, so I guess I'm getting deep into um, politics and that. Now, I mean, politically, I've always just wanted to make the world a better place, and I don't really care whether it's left or right or what the process is. But for me, it's a striving for let's try and do better. Let's not be beholden to any idea, thought, anything. We can do better. We want to do better. We want to do better because we want our kids to do better. We want our grandkids to be better. So we do want better. And that's what bothers me in politics. It's just that it's society has to push what's better and the politicians are following behind. And where I think the politicians should be taking some lead and and taking us. Saying, yeah, we want a better world. That means we have to do this. May not be the nicest thing, may not be what you love, may not be the perfect thing for your life, but guess what? There are sacrifices to be made, and as long as the sacrifices are evenly felt through the society, I think it's saleable. But politicians are gutless. Politicians are gutless, and they're not saying the thing of like, yeah, Gasoline cars, that's the wrong thing. We need to get them off the roads. Not now. You know, you know, you know, not tomorrow, but within a year or two. Like, we're serious. Like, it's going to suck. Cars are going to get expensive here, and there's not going to be enough of them for everybody to go around. But <laughs> oh, we got to do this. Um, everybody's got to, everywhere's got to do this. And we're not going to wait to be the last because we have to do this. And Somebody has to be first. Somebody has to set the, yeah, this is what we do. And that's the sort of thing that we could be doing as a nation, and we aren't. We aren't pushing ourselves to being the moral standard of move ahead, take one for the team, and make the world a better place, because we all want a better place. And that's, I think, what Canadians want the country to be. That's why I think the anger about the truck convoy and the anti-vaxxers because it's just like seriously you can't take one for the team for something that really doesn't make much of a difference wearing a mask or getting a vaccine which you know is actually not bad for you you're not willing to take one for the team and i think that is what rankles so many canadians and then i would what i think canada as a nation would step forward and probably go yes we're going to set the global standard for what we need to do. 
you know, we want to be, we're going to be number one. We are going to basically say, crap, this can't continue. We have to stop. Somebody has to be first. We're a G7 country, goddammit. We're not like nowhere. We matter on the global scale. Not as much, you know, not a huge amount, but Canada is one of the largest economies on earth. We have the power to set a standard and saying, no, we can stop, we can change. But we have a gutless government in, in Ottawa. Always have had a gutless government in Ottawa. And I think this is a nation where people with the right sort of person saying it in the right sort of way, we could be, become the global leaders through, I think what Pierre Trudeau tried to do, but it was too arrogant to pull off, was that no, Canada can be a power unto itself because we can be the moral standard for the world. And that's what I think Canadians would love this country to be to be the moral standard for the world, to bring, you know, basically saying, we're here, come join us, this is right. And that's where I think we have a problem in our politics is that no political party is willing to do that. So, anyway, yes, this ended up being much longer. <laughs> I hope that idea was vaguely cogent. I really do, because it sounded really interesting to me as it was coming out. And if you ask me what I just spoke about, I can't remember, so yes. The fifth part of this um, trilogy. I'm really stoned now. So at least I'm getting that straight to still. Uh, my issue now is, can I actually get this posted? I managed to record it now. I can still move the mouse. Move over there, cursor, over there. Right, right, right to the edge. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Good, there you go, cursor. Say, and still move the cursor to where it's going. <laughs> that to me is success on one level. But can I get it to upload it? That we'll see about. Anyway, I hope I'm amusing some of you. Please, I really hope I am. Have a good evening. Part six. No, 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 no. I don't need to do part six. <laughs>